Welcome to MCOM Solutions. Jake here. We're going to talk about what I like to call the Baofeng effect and how it's impacted their emergency and disaster communication space. So, you know, way back when, many years ago, probably at least 10 years ago, I bought my first Baofeng UV5R. I believe I paid around $18. I look today and they're going for about $16 and some change. You can buy a two pack for $32. And they are a great entry ham radio to you know handheld ht that you could use to learn on uh, and then eventually you know my recommendation is you move up and buy a little better higher higher quality hts and get into the mobiles and base stations you know there's the possibilities are <laughs> almost lim limitless but they don't really fill the perfect role in an emergency communication. Yeah, they do. I think in the sense of like you have a set of those that you could hand out to friends or family in an emergency or a disaster and be able to communicate with them. They saw that there in North Carolina during the hurricanes that, you know, that a lot of people were handing out their spare radios. And I think that's where they fall into a great space. The problem has come from the fact that newcomers to the space decide hey i want to get a little more prepared or whatever and i want to go out and buy a set of radios or one radio and then maybe buy another one later they've set the expectation that radio equipment is cheap you know you could buy two baofings for 32 dollars. why should anything cost anything more uh, unfortunately that's a really false sense of of cost you know because once you start increasing the capabilities of the radio, the technology, the quality, all those things, prices definitely go up. And yes, of course, some companies maybe charge, you know, more than maybe they should, but, you know, things are only what people are willing to pay for them, right? It's also jumped into the Mestastic space because Mestastic radios, LoRa radios are relatively cheap you know you can get into you know something like this SenseCap t1000e for uh, just a little over $30 uh, you can get the Heltex for around that price you can get if you're a DYIer and you like to do stuff yourself you can probably get something put together for even cheaper uh, however the Mestastic radio Laura radio space is saw the demand and they're starting to create more off-the-shelf ready radios and a lot of those are running today around $100. If you're not a DYI type person, then that's a good place to start. You can get some for less, some for more. Um, in addition to that space, there's been a lot of small businesses in the US that are building more custom options for the Laura Mesh radio space. So today I'm gonna break down a build list or I kind of built a build list of what the AT Labs RM1 has in it and uh, what prices I found doing some internet research. It's not gonna be exact cost and materials, but just to give people some con concept of what it's cost for someone to put something like this together and then still run a business and sell it for some sort of, at least some profit so they can pay themselves and pay the bills. Uh, because I do get a lot of comments about, oh, that's ridiculous, they're charging too much for that. You can just go out and buy the, you know, a $30 radio and, you know, Yes, everybody's budget is different. And then if you've built a comms plan, a communications plan, and you've decided what you need to fill the gaps in that plan, and it doesn't include a you know IP or pending IP67 rated tactical type mestastic radio, then by all means, don't buy that radio if that's not what you need. It, you know, if you want to jump ahead, you can jump to the Beartooth Mark II, but you're going to spend a significant amount more money for an increased capability. We'll talk about that a little more towards the end. So the RM1, to get into this, the RM1 build list, the AT Labs RM1, I did a video about that here. I'll link here, uh, the, just a general overview of the radio, is baseboard or base... Uh, module is the rack mini so those the starter kits are about $31 they have the rack 12 500 G NSS the GPS module those are about 19 the relay their power relay they're using there is about a dollar a pop the type in connectors all their connectors all the bulkhead type connectors are all IP rated connectors so they come at a little higher cost 
for the uh, N-type antenna mount is about $599. The goose gooseneck tactical antennas, those go for around about $34 a pop. The USB-C bulkhead jack is about $1099. The power cell they're using is a three cell 18650 10,000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery pack, about $29.95. The power switch $999. The active GNS S antenna, the GPS antenna. I found a really wide range of prices on that, ones that were even over $100. Uh, but I found ones that look similar to the model that they're using. I couldn't find the exact model, about $25 to $50 price range. Enclosures, big variation there. They have an aluminum, uh, extruded aluminum enclosure that has end caps. It's, you know, an IP rated uh, enclosure, but then they have also the rubber bumpers. So the best I could find was between 18 and 25. It may be more or less than that, depending on how many they're ordering. Of course, bulk pricing could affect, but smaller businesses tend to buy huge bulk <laughs> amounts because they don't want to end up with a bunch of material on hand and then not be able to sell it. This also, so that price range was about $168 to maybe $200 to $180. That doesn't include like the 3D printing for the, uh, the basically a little sled that the rack modules mounted to. Of course, you know, you don't put the price of the whole 3D printer in there and film it. It'd be kind of hard to calculate that. I mean, I know the professional 3D printers probably have a formula for that, but, you know, but a good... 3D printers are start probably around the $500 range and go up. Don't add in labor and other materials like the resins they use to seal the end caps after they put the holes through them. The drill presses or mills are using to put the holes through those cases, wires, solder, labor, all that stuff in between, shipping, everything to be able to do that and then sell this radio. $450. I feel like they're asking an unreasonable price for this radio. If it is, once again, if it is a radio that you feel like you need to fill a hole in your communications plan. So that really breaks that down. You know, add in the fact, small US-based company, like it ain't easy. You can't compete with, you know, a Chinese manufacturing company that's manufacturing in China, that has cheap labor and is mass producing this stuff. They're getting everything at very cheap, probably at cost standing there. And so no U.S. based manufacturer is going to be able to compete with that. That's just a simple fact of the matter. What do you guys think? What do you think the impact of the Baofeng effect has had on emergency communications world, the disaster communications world? You know, throw in comments I get about the Beartooth Mark II when I did videos about that. You know, everyone thinks it's a LoRa module. It's not. It's just the module itself is $150. It's on a custom PCB board. All the research and development was done by the Beartooth team. I'm sure there was quite a bit of money invested into just doing that and then having custom built PCB boards, GPS modules, all those other things they've added to those radios. And yes, they're expensive. Are, you know, I don't know what their profit margins are and that's not what this video is about, but they are a US-based company that's building a very custom radio to meet the needs of some people out there that need the ability to be able to send voice and data files like pictures and stuff like that over a mesh network. So capabilities, increased capabilities equals increased price. That's just a simple fact of the matter. Baofeng UV5Rs are not waterproof. You can get some Baofengs that are, and guess what? They cost more money. Uh, you're still dealing with the potential uh, quality issues that you might have with a Baofeng radio. But that said, let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video useful, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. You can buy me a coffee if you really want. There's a link down below. My social media links are down below. Website, other product links are also down below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more emergency communication solutions videos.